After months of negotiation, the city of Albuquerque and the Department of Justice announced a settlement agreement last week that promises a huge overhaul of the Albuquerque Police Department. Now, last April, the DOJ released a damning report of APD criticizing its use of force, particularly by its SWAT team. Among the requirements are the creation of a civilian police oversight agency, a use of force review board, and the creation of a mental health advisory committee. The agreement also provides for a monitor who will report on the city's compliance to the DOJ, the city, the public, and to a federal judge who has the power to enforce the terms of this agreement. Now, Mayor Richard J. Berry estimates the cost of the complying with this will be between $4 million and $6 million. And Jim, we had an interview earlier in the show about the national trend towards police militarization. And, and, and I'm wondering if in your gut you feel like this consent decree is, is a, a bit of an antidote to that kind of thing for our city here. Does it force APD to pull back on that militarization side a little bit? That's certainly the intent. Yeah. And um, hopefully maybe it starts that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, for, for example, one of the things that it requires to do is now if a police officer even so much as, as points a weapon at someone, they have to do paperwork. They have to, to, right. to write that up and explain that as a use of force. Um, so that, I mean, that changes the way officers have to think about the way they mm -hmm. I mean, use force. Because actually pointing a weapon at someone is, is a use of force. Right. Um, so if, I mean, I, I think that what that suggests is that we're getting at some of the the willy-nilly, let's just kind of tough guy mentality right. um, that there's a perception of happening within the Albuquerque police. Sure. The bottom line question for a lot of the community, Lana Atkinson certainly is, am I safer now? Do I trust my police department more now? The real bedrock questions. Does this cons consent decree, I mean, we've never had one here, so we're, we don't know how we're supposed to feel about a consent decree about our police department. So emotionally, are, are, are we in a better place now as citizenry? What do you think? Well, I think that we're in a slightly better place. Mm -hmm. Um, that uh, we know that there's potential progress moving forward and I think the fact that there's a monitor and that there's someone who's sort of an mm -hmm. external observer who mm -hmm. can take a look at it and who has obligations to report means there's actually accountability mechanism mm -hmm. which is a good thing. And that was part of the discussion early was the monitor or no monitor. Could we actually police ourselves quote unquote or have somebody looking over this thing? It, and again with you is, is that I think that's part of the community dialogue here that there's like you said there's someone watching over you know, and now they have to express that out to the public. So, for, Steve, for, as you watch this from Santa Fe and, and, and other things going on, when you see a consent decree and a police department from the outside looking in, do you expect something different immediately? Do you, would you reasonably no. expect it in five, ten years? Or what's your what's your uh, I, I think maybe we'll start seeing it um, fairly soon. I, I think, uh, you know, if, if police shootings actually decrease, mm -hmm. if... Uh, you know, I think that'll that'll really help. Um, the um, I know a lot of the officers are upset about having to do more paperwork, and right. it's going to stop me from drawing my gun, and I might get killed because. But I don't think anybody's going to, you know, let themselves get shot over, you know, perceived paperwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I, I think it's a good thing in the long run, and the accountability, like Lana was talking about, is uh, right. very important. Exactly right. Cameras are a big deal. Certainly, and, and you know, we've got some movement on that. But again, the idea that Steve just said, there's always resistance inside any, inside any institution. Mm -hmm. There's a resistance to change, isn't there? It's a tough one. Well, what I think is really interesting about this settlement is, are the components of training and accountability and how they might work together. Mm -hmm. Because they, we've talked about how there are a number of APD officers that are retiring. Mm -hmm. They're going to be pulling in new officers that are going to sort of get a different training perspective than you know most of the force that's there now. That's right. I also think that while all the review boards and all the oversight, the monitor, that's all very appropriate mm -hmm. for this situation, I wonder if the thing that'll have the bigger effect um, are the officers knowing that there's accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, when an officer gets in trouble, is disciplined for not turning his lapel cam on or for, you know, uh, using her taser when she wasn't supposed to, will the other officers be deterred from maybe making inappropriate actions mm -hmm. because they know that there's more accountability? Mm -hmm. That's what I think we might see faster. Sure, and that makes sense, doesn't it? People, and in fact, the public wants to know how, how soon can the, we can expect these things. Absolutely, and I, and I think it seems like what's in the agreement, I mean, it's in a big, it's a, 106 pages to, to lay this whole thing sure. out. Months of negotiation. Um, but I think there's elements that make immediate changes mm -hmm. and make long-term changes. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we've talked about for, for years as we, as we looked at this, that it's a culture issue. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, for example, I mean, we talked about the, the, the pointing, pointing firearms, you have that changed that. I mean, 
officers are going to now have their use of their tasers, are going to be audited. I mean, yeah. these are the kind of things that make immediate changes. Sure. Um, at the same time, we're now beginning, you know, development of new policies of how officers deal with um, mentally mentally ill individuals, mm -hmm. um, their their contact. There's the, the intent is to in, increase contact with those kind of at risk populations. Mm -hmm. um, those things will take time, sure. and as as Julian mentioned, you know, we're we're now going to start a wave of, of mm -hmm. hiring to to fill in some of the, I guess the to, to backfill the retirements, mm -hmm. just kind of getting them up to speed with this new culture, mm -hmm. that takes time. Where does the chief end up in all of this, in your view? Is he in a better position? Can he now say, look, you know, we've got our marching orders, we know what we have to do, and in case there's a hiccup, we have a way to backstop all this stuff. Is that better for him as a, as the top of the chain, so to speak? I think it's better for him in that the marching orders are clear, but I think it's also more difficult for him in mm -hmm. that, um, the path forward has been has been laid out, right. and if he strays from it, it will be very clear. Right. So, in in that regard, I think that he will face um, more, maybe higher expectations of accountability because I mean we can see from the outside right. what the kind of the path that we were expecting him to be able to follow. Absolutely, and and pulling back in the long view of where the mayor's been on this, Lana Atkinson too. It's, it, this was a difficult situation to manage. I think any mayor would have had a difficulty, certainly. But now that we have had this come down, it seemed like it was forever to come. Where does the mayor come out in all of this? It's it, it, interesting how people have had a problem with it, the way he've, he's done things. But here we are. We have a solution. We have a solution. Yeah. He's trying to rally the council behind him, right. make sure that they're so. It seems like he's doing the right things mm -hmm. to, in, in terms of leadership and clarity to the public. Mm -hmm. Is is the problem ultimately solvable, Steve Terrell, by the feds imposing solutions on local people? Is that is that a really a possibility? Well, that always causes a resentment among the, like the local agency is yeah. under the consent decree or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, it may be what they they needed. Right. And have Big Daddy come in and uh, sure you know, imposes uh, stuff. But sure. Uh, but the, interestingly, the union's on board, seemingly. It's early days, but you have to imagine they may have known somewhat of what was going on uh, during the negotiations. We haven't heard a great hue and cries. And I think yeah. the, the thing that the union is probably going to get involved with and the, the other change that will happen here for the chief is that he's going to have to reorganize his strategy for addressing some of the problems you know, that the Albuquerque community is facing. He's got this repeat offender project unit that you know the DOJ has said you have to get rid of that. Um, Jeff Proctor with uh, KRQE, he called that unit the tip of the spear for the department's over aggressive cowboy culture. That's right. And so what they're going to do with that, how they're going to uh, attack the problem of repeat offenders, mm -hmm. which units, how they're going to be reorganized, I think all of that will be really telling as well. All right, thank you all. Now thanks all the time we have for right now, but head to our website for more topics and discussions with these guys on the clock. For more news of the week, archived interviews, and other bonus material, head to our website at NewMexicoInFocus.org. That's where you can also find all our election coverage, a partnership between KNME, PBS, and NPR stations statewide. Also, find us on Facebook and Twitter. Search New Mexico in Focus. As always, all of us here at New Mexico in Focus appreciate your time and your effort to stay informed and engaged. I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.